the title of the presentation is Pre-processing Technique to Improve the Convolutional Neural Network-Based Face Recognition. And this is the work that my master's student, Gianchi Ragawan, did, and I'm presenting her work. I'm going to go through introduction and pre-processing methods, convolutional neural network architecture, deep learning-based face recognition, why deep learning-based facial recognition, deep CNN model architecture, feature extraction, uh, and regularization, effect of pre-processing in the experimental uh, work that we've done, and accuracy rate would be presented, and uh, we draw a small conclusion at the end. Uh, well, the new trend uh, towards face recognition is to use deep learning method uh, and convolutional neural network. Uh, they are slightly different than a normal uh, neural network in, in a sense that, you know, I mean, in a CNN, neuron in convolutional layer are thinly connected to the neurons uh, in the next layer based on the relative location. The main advantage is, you know, I mean, the deep learning method uh, required huge uh, database uh, to learn the uh, vital features uh, which are represented in the data. And again, the main problem is uh, we do not have currently, you know, I mean, in any of the experimental data we use huge databases and that's one of the main problem which uh, basically leads to the poor generalization and uh, result in overfitting uh, in order to increase the accuracy of the face recognition we decided to perform pre-processing of data uh, through the histogram equalization uh, difference of Gaussian self quotient image and gamma intensity correction, locally tuned inverse sine nonlinear and contrast limited adaptive histogram equalization that we've used you know, I mean, in an exhaustive search to find out which one of these would improve better than the others you know, I mean, the uh, quality of the recognition rate. Now, the CNN architecture is made of, you know, I mean, several layers. Uh, you have the convolution layer, you have the max polling, and uh, you see that there are several of the max polling and convolution layer exist. And at the end, you go to the classification layer. This is in a sense that, you know, I mean, it tells that, you know, I mean, uh, you're having the data uh, given to the input layer uh, and then, you know, I mean, uh, the hidden layer two would start taking the face feature and the face uh, which uh, goes out of the hidden layer two would get to the output layer which the classification would take uh, place. Now, uh, in the uh, deep uh, learning methods of the convolutional neural network, uh, use of the cascade of multiple layer of processing units for feature extraction are performed. And this basically, you know, I mean, requires, you know, I mean, uh, GPUs or using, you know, I mean, faster, what I call, you know, I mean, uh, hardware in order to perform uh, these hundreds of layers and millions of the parameters that we have to process. Now, in the model that we have taken, you know, I mean, we are going through the uh, 128 by 128 feature map, and then we use in the first layer eight filters, and then, you know, I mean, we are uh, basically uh, accepting a dropout rate of 0.1 uh, to the next layer, and then we are increasing the dropout to 0.2, and uh, again, you know, I mean, the, uh, the number of uh, filters we use from 8 increase to 16, while, you know, I mean, the dropout rate, you know, I mean, is practically increased to 0.3. And then, you know, I mean, we are going to the max polling layer that, you know, I mean, the, uh, the number of filters are increased to 32. And this basically goes all the way, you know, I mean, with the increase of the dropout rate to the uh, uh, practically, you know, I mean, the 
uh, classification layer. And this is basically what we have used. This is the description of exactly what I've explained to you in the previous, uh, uh, basically, figure. Uh, and that's what we have. And uh, it's uh, basically telling me that, you know, I mean, that the classification uh, layer uses soft max activation with categorical cross entropy loss function. Uh, the softmax layer is used to produce the classification scores in which each score is probability of the particular class for a given uh, instance. The dropout principle is employed on convolutional neural network models. Uh, we use the ADAM optimizer with a learning rate of 0 0.001, which is found empirically. We have used so many basically value and found out that's one of the best that we have. The other feature map are subsampled uh, with max polling layer uh, with a size of two by two, uh, which is the number of uh, pixels which shift over the input matrix. When the stripe is two, means the filter is moved by two pixels at a time. The number of neurons in this output layer is limited to 28 for the extended ELB database, which we have only 20 eight uh, basically subject. In ferret database, the number of neuron at the output layer is 994, which relate to the number of uh, what we call the you know, classes that we have. And uh, we have done the training using different batch sizes. That's, that's one of the things that it was very important for us to see whether that would affect the uh, learning uh, basically as well as the correction rate outcome. Uh, it's uh, going through, you know, basically uh, the various type of, you know, I mean, uh, layer and what uh, basically these layers are doing, you know, I mean, is practically, you know, I mean, each layer try to come up with the features that is required uh, to go to the classification. Now, we use the regularization. In order to uh, reduce the overfitting, regularization process is employed uh, on the network model. Regularization is a method of making minute changes to the actual network model and the learning algorithm so that uh, the model. Uh, this is, you know, in basically is a preservation that we do. Uh, we are using different type of regularization technique uh, such as dropout, that's the one I explained that I used, you know, in variable dropout, uh, data augmentation, and early stopping, batch normalization. These are different types of regularization that are uh, basically used. Uh, the data that we have used for a ferret database, these are the sample of the ferret database, uh, which uh, they are collected uh, over 40, 40, 15 sessions between August 1993 and July 1996. The database con contain uh, 1,564 sets of images for a total of uh, 14,126 images that include 1,999 individuals and 365 duplicate sets of images. Duplicate set is a second set of image of person already in a database and was usually taken on a different day. For the extended Yale database, you could see that, you know, I mean, here the contrast are uh, basically dreadful. I mean, this is one of the things that uh, gives us the challenges. For the Yale database, we have uh, uh, 16,128 images, 28 human subjects under nine different poses, uh, 64 elimination conditions, 64 samples are divided into five subsets according to the angle between the light source direction and camera optical axis. Uh, Non-homogeneous background, the size of each image is 192 by 168 pixels, with 256 grade level per pixel. 
Now here, you know, I mean, one of the results that we have, uh, we'd like to show you, uh, we have applied pre-processing techniques uh, to improve the accuracy rate uh, for the ferret database uh, and Yale database. We have uh, basically used the model that we have for an extended Yale database, provided the highest accuracy rate of 99.8% after application of the uh, SQI. Before the application of the preprocessing, the accuracy rate achieved was 97.2, which is about 2.6% uh, improvement. For a ferret database, provided the highest accuracy rate of 76.6% after application of the DOG, before applying the pre-processing technique, accuracy rate was 71.4%. Uh, these are basically accuracy rate of the extended yield uh, B database in deep learning, depending on the batch sizes that we have. If you look at it, you know, I mean, the accuracy of 99.8% uh, with a batch size of four was achieved as the bike size increases, the accuracy goes down here. Now for the ferret database, again, uh, the, the best basically accuracy that we have uh, obtained is 76.6%, uh, again, with a bike size of four, four. And you see that again, you know, I mean, when the bike size goes up, uh, the accuracy goes down. Concluding, uh, conclusion, you know, I mean, is we have the CNN-based approach with the deep model yielded accuracy rate of up to 71.4% for a bike size of four in ferret database without application of pre-processing technique. Uh, while, you know, I mean, when we applied the pre-processing, this is the uh, DOG uh, technique that was increased the accuracy to 76.6%. While in Omid for the, sorry, uh, for the year B database that we have, uh, without any pre-processing, the accuracy was 97.2%. And when we applied the pre-processing, it rose to 99.8%. For all of them, the best accuracy when the back size is equal to four. And I would like to, uh, stop and thank you for listening and any question I would be happy to answer.